your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another episode of Summer's House, Martha's Vineyard, and this is um, season two, episode seven, and this is called Flamingo on the Buff, um, Bluffs. Yeah, um, I get the Flamingo part, but I'm not sure about the other part, but anyway, um, this review probably won't be as long as the other one because not a lot happened this episode. Um, there was a lot more storytelling when it came to other people who were on this show. And it kind of was in a weird way, even though not a lot happened, um, I was happy about it because <laughs> it was an episode that was focused on Nick. <laughs> I was like, yay! And also, too, because it was focused on Rick, um, Nick, guess what else was it about? Running! I was like, yes! Yes! <laughs> so, for those who are not, for those who are new here, welcome to my channel. Um, it probably says it in the name Melanin Nostalgic Runner. I'm a runner. And also, too, look, I'm even wearing the race shirt that I did earlier this year on the Shamrock Shuffle, which is a kind of a pretty big deal for runners in um, Chicago. So anyway, um, and like Nick, I'm also a marathoner. I actually also do ultras as well. Not nearly as fast as Nick because I found out how fast he did that 5K in that episode. I was like, yeah, my fastest time has um, for a 5k was 23 minutes and that was, <laughs> I ain't seen her in a long time. The last time I saw that, those numbers, I was in my twenties and yeah, for those who, who've been around for a while, y'all know about how old I am. So there's that. Anyway, um, without further ado though, let's get into the episode. I'm probably not going to go completely in order this time around because, um, I will say this also, the other reason why I feel like not a lot happened with this episode is I will be fully transparent. The summer thing, that everything is going on with summer is truly becoming exhausting to me. And I really hope after she watches herself on this show, she really seeks professional help and gets therapy because, um, you know, as much as I was giving her crap at the first two or three episodes, she, I don't think she... I think part of it is she doesn't know who she is or who she wants. Like she presents herself as one way, but I don't know if that's really her. And I don't think if she, I don't think she knows if that's her. I think she's suffering a little bit from some identity crisis um, because of her upbringing and not feeling loved, not feeling accepted. I think there's a lot of that going on. And as a result, she lashes out and it comes off as very erratic. And um, she did have an interesting observation about herself in this episode, but I think for her it runs deeper. I think she tries to surface her issues as it being not as bad as they are, but it's one of those things, if you cannot handle your emotions where you literally can get physical with person, person at any point in time, you need help. <laughs> and, you know... I get, I mean, I think everyone, and the other thing that I will say too with this episode is I feel like a lot of people try to chalk off her behavior to her being a bad drunk. And it's like, yeah, that's a huge part of it. She shouldn't be drinking if she's that much of an emotional wreck and where she can't control herself. But at the same time, alcohol, some drugs, sometimes here and there are truth serums. You're doing what you really want to do. Um, so sometimes it's the case of the truth is coming out. And I think in Summer's case, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know if she's still just trying to hold back. I think because she has so many things bottled up and she doesn't share and she still hasn't yet at this point, either what's going on. I don't know if she's ever going to, but it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you can't that's not gonna get you very far. Like, you're going to end up doing something really messed up. Like, if putting hands on people is what you do when you really, really are trying to have fun, it, it, it's just, I don't know, I'll just say this, and, and I, I don't wanna go on my soapbox about summer 
anymore, even though it still kind of was a little bit of a summer focused episode. Um, she really needs to figure it out. And also, um, yeah, she just really needs to figure it out. Like, I think... She has a lot in common with a couple of people in this house, but I don't know if she really has a lot in common. To me, it seems like she's a little bit more, and I can see a little bit of it, but I don't know if that's her for real either. Because again, we don't know these people in real life, but the way it's coming off on my screen while I'm looking at her, it seems like she's a little bit of a social chameleon. So she takes on characteristics of a whole bunch of people, but unfortunately it seems like at this point in time, she's taking on all the negative, you know, She's like a sponge of negativity. So if anyone has any, a little bit of negative energy is going directly to her because she herself is not a, a very positive person at this point in her life. Um, so everyone, so it's, she, I, I noticed this was happening, it seems like, to me, to me. But anyway, let's get into the episode. So the Freaknik party's over with. The aftermath of what happened with Summer like being a menace is being talked about all throughout the house in the morning. While this is happening, Nick is actually getting ready for a 5K. And apparently everyone knew that he was doing a 5K on this island. And um, I felt bad for Nick because no one, everyone was, you know, still up from like the night before or people, people did not get to sleep till late. Like Noel did not get to, Noel, Summer, and Bria, like that whole situation None of them got to sleep till like 5 a.m. And based off of a typical 5K around the summer months, that probably meant, that was probably around the time where he was getting up. So it was probably, it was probably a lot of that. And so Nick was in his feelings about the fact that no one, you know, even, because he ended up doing this 5K, but he was there by himself. No one came to support him. No one even woke up to say, hey, good luck, and then go back to sleep. And to me, I would, I kind of felt, I felt him in that. When it comes to that, they could have been like, hey, good luck, and go back to sleep. Yeah, we get you on vacation, but you can always go back to sleep. <laughs> you know, and then sleep off everything. And, um, I know. And also side note, so... The other thing I forgot to mention, which was cracking me up. So Noel called like what Nick was about to do with 5K. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> One thing that us as black folks, what we'll do, especially for not runners, we're going to call every single race a marathon. And that it ain't that. Like a marathon. And this is a PSA because even though I find it funny, I also kind of find it annoying as a runner. Do not say that every race I'm doing is a marathon. A, a marathon is a distance. A marathon is always and will always be 26.2 miles. Anything that is less or more than that is not a marathon. It's either just a race or anything more than a marathon is actually called an ultra marathon. So that's why I say I do ultras because I've ran 50 mile races, 31 mile races. Like I've done races that are more than a marathon a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to say how many I've done, but I'm just saying that. And I think actually Nick last season even called this out last season, which is why I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we're, we're kind of the same person when it comes to the running thing. But anyway, just a random PSA. It was cracking me up because I was like, child, if one thing us black folks are going to do, we're going to call every race that is on foot a marathon anyway neither here nor there nick was in his feelings nick was in his feelings though because he really was like not getting the support that he kind of needed and we find out later on why so um nick is also going through some things and maybe that's the other reason why this episode just was it was okay but it's like everybody is going through something this summer everyone's going through it and Nick finally shares that he had a close, his fraternity brother um, passed away unexpectedly recently. He, he, he drowned and his fraternity number was five. And so when he did this 5K, he ended up being in fifth place. 
And he says every since um, his fraternity brother passed away, he's every time he's ran, there's been five has been a very significant number. And so like basically like an angel number of his. And I can I can understand that. Like for me, it's not really a tragedy thing. But for those who, again, who've been like on this channel for a little bit, especially the last couple of months, um, my angel number is four right now. Like four has been everywhere. Uh, four has been the number that's been leading me to success lately. And I just been listening to that. Um, I don't think it is that anymore because I think four at this point has met its purpose. So now we're moving on to bigger, better things because I haven't been seeing fours as much lately. But I will say the month between the months of March, well, really between the months of like February to April, I was seeing four everywhere. Four was like the number that I needed to kind of focus on. And four, um, for those who are kind of into numerology, I think that's like a manifesting number. So I think that's why a lot happened with what I had going on personally in a positive way because I was manifesting. I was in the energy of I need to manifest better things for myself. And you know, whether you believe in that or not, that's, that's a whole thing. But I personally do believe in like, you know, the universe, God, your ancestors, people who've moved on, you know, from that, you know, from a spiritual sense, um, passing away thing um, that are basically becoming your angels in your life. They're looking out for you and sometimes they'll give you signs to remind you of like, hey, I got you. And so to me, I think that was kind of beautiful. And I kind of wish in this episode, we would have talked a little bit more about that with Nick. And he did get emotional as confessional, um, probably towards the end of the episode, talking about it more. Because then um, there was a party later on that he was hosting with all his friends, his girlfriend, um, um, Tasia came to. Which I don't know if they're still together or not. And if they are, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been crushing on Nick a lot. But I respect the relationship. I'm just saying. But I have been crushing on Nick a lot. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So, anyway, I kind of, again, I said this episode, we're going to be skipping around because I just kind of want to get more to people's stories versus really, like, going the chronological order this time around. Um, also because while the episode's fresh in my head, I kind of want to focus on certain people. So with Nick, that was kind of um, just what happened there. Also, he did have that party. His party was a really, really nice suit and tie type of party. Everyone was dressed, dressed. And I will say this. Um, so Natalie is still there, Amir's girlfriend. And it seems like this is more of Natalie's speed. I will say last episode, I was sighing her like a lot and I still am. <laughs> Cause I'm also sighing Amir. Like I honestly, between both of them, I don't need to see them next season. Like Amir doesn't really bring anything. The ditziness is cute until it's not. And this episode, it really wasn't. So, um, cause I don't like, I don't like how he's treating Mariah. I really don't. Um, cause there was a conversation between him and Mariah, but also to Natalie with her, she seems to be a little bit of an ish starter. And a little, some previews from next episode, we're seeing it. She's a little bit of a gossip girl, um, which kind of makes sense because Amir is a little bit of a gossip king too. He, them two like are bone carriers. But um, I think Amir does it a little bit better because he does it where it comes off ditzy. Um, I don't know. I will just say this episode with Natalie, she did seem like she was warming up a lot more to the group. Um, and maybe just the freak Nick and all that was just too much for her on like the first episode. And she did talk to the, to everyone in the group. She's like, I wasn't trying to come off a certain way. She kind of did try to clean it up because I think she knew what it looked like. Because <laughs> it didn't look good for her saying she don't like freak Nick. And I'm like, oh, so you don't like to be around black people. Like that's how it came off. I mean, I feel like a lot of people was was catching that tea. Like it, it kind of was like, oh, you like black men, but you don't really like black people. You know? 
And that's a thing. That is a thing. Like as someone who is dove in the interracial relations, um, yeah, I found that out. Like, oh, you like me, but you don't really like black people actually. And it's just kind of like, I can't be your token black black friend or boyfriend, girlfriend, or any of that. I can't be none of that for you. Like, you gotta like you gotta like my people. And I, you can't be saying some disparaging things to me just because, yeah, my voice is not, you know, your stereotypical thing. And maybe my style's a little different, but I was like, come on now. We can't we can't have that. That is one thing we cannot have. Like, I love I love my people and you mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, but Natalie seems like she was warming up a lot more. I feel like I'm going in a circle with that. Um, but she was bone carrying this episode quite a bit. Not, it wasn't as messy as it looks like it's going to be in preview for the next episode. I'm going to reserve judgment until I see the next episode because we know how pr production does. Um, that might not, there might have been a reason behind that. And the reason why I'm, I'm saying that is because it looked like she was getting on Nick and Y'all already know how I feel about Nick. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, yeah, this was definitely more her speed, this party. But she, there was a moment where she, she still seems like she's a little bit pressed like a panini when it comes to Jordan. Because Amir made a comment about, like, a wig. And Amir is, Amir's kind of an idiot. I mean, maybe that's the reason why I don't like him. I don't think it's a ditz. I don't think, I think the ditzy thing is kind of an act when it comes to getting him out of trouble. But I think also he is kind of that dumb. I feel like he is kind of dense. And again, I don't know none of y'all in real life, but this is all, I'm basing this all on how I'm seeing this on TV. And he thought that this other chick who was there and Jordan had the same wig and they didn't, they didn't look the same. Like they had pretty much similar outfits, but the wigs were not the same. I'm like, and he made a comment like, oh my gosh, Jordan's hair looks amazing. And Natalie kind of got in her feelings a little bit there, which was a little weird, but that was also during the party. So, um, I, let me go into Amir next here. So, also, the reason why I'm saying Amir can be done is that I do not like <clears throat> how he's handling this Mariah thing. So, Mariah does the grown thing and asks to have a conversation. This is all during the party, mind you. Um, oh, let me, I, I forgot. To, so, while I was skipping around to the Nick thing, Nick had everyone in the house before the party take, like, had them all signed to duty to get the house cleaned up and another side note so while i was actually watching this episode and while nick you know was trying to get people to like do the cl house cleaning thing the one thing the one observation that i kind of just don't understand and haven't figured out is why is it why don't they actually have like a chore list and things for people to do during the time while they're there like, I think that should have been rules and regulations that they should put together at the very beginning, season one, and then keep it going accordingly. Because the way I am kind of just slightly grossed out by the idea that these people, and I mean like, and I'm not even used to this. I'm just like, I'm kind of asking myself who raised y'all. <laughs> like... I can't be staying in a house where the kitchen and the bathroom is dirty and there's clutter. Like, just the old school principle of picking up after yourself should be a thing. And some of y'all, I, I, I ain't gonna hold you. I'm judging every time I watch it and I see that this kitchen is a hot mess even after the partying. Like, that should be one of the first, like, first things you do. And even when I do go to parties or I'm at a party... I pick up after myself and I just don't understand where, why is that not happening? Like that's kind of gross. I'm kind of judging. Like I don't mean to be judgy, but I am judging. Cause like I can't clean, I can't eat in a nasty kitchen. Like if the kitchen's dirty, I only want to be in the house. I got to leave. I can't, I can't do that. Like, and so although Nick had these rules and regulations, I feel like it's not even necessary. I think some of y'all just need to learn how to pick up after yourself and have some home training. I'm just saying, vacation or not, I don't care. As someone who stays in Airbnbs regularly, I still clean up after myself. Like, and I don't wait till last minute. It's a clean as you go type of deal. Even at home, 
after I cook, I, the dishes are done because I cleaned as I was cooking. It's not that hard to do that. I know you're cooking for a lot of people, but it's still not that hard of a concept. And anyone who does the opposite of that, you can even ask some of my exes, even my last ex, even though I don't talk to him anymore. Child, that's the main reason. If you're nasty, I don't, I can't look at you the same way at all. I'm like, you need to learn some how, like some home training. And maybe I'm just kind of a neat freak. Anyway, moving on. To get the house cleaned up. And Preston was making fun. was like, see, we already know how Nick is when it comes to these parties. Because you know, after this first season, a lot of them hung out and stuff afterwards. And so a lot of them actually see each other hang out regularly now. So it's not weird anymore. Um, and a lot of them already knew each other. So it's kind of a whole thing. But anyway, Preston's is like, we already know how Nick is when it comes to like him and his people. He becomes like a drill sergeant once his event. And he kind of was. And they, they kind of made fun of it, like in a confessional. Not the confessional, but the produ production had like um, military stuff with duties. It's like, we clear, clear. Because like Nick had a whole entire meeting about it. He had a house meeting about it. But then before he had the house meeting, he did, you know, explain to them. He, he felt a way that no one like said like, good luck to him before the race. Or even came to cheer him on for the race. And Noelle, Noelle in her confession was like, Nick, you already knew what happened last night. I was not going to be doing that. Like, I literally got my got hands put on me. Like, no. <laughs> Which I don't fault her for that. But the up, uh, but I don't think he really meant everybody. I mean, he, he just wants someone to come and say good luck. Someone could have just did that. And I agree with him. But anyway, I kind of skipped around to that. But back to Amir. So with the Amir thing, I am done with him. He doesn't need to be back next season. No offense. Like, I understand that you weren't around black culture growing up and stuff like that, but like you're in your late twenties and you could do your part to educate yourself for next, for next season. If you're, if you get next season, I honestly don't think you need one because I've seen enough and I don't, I did not like how you treat Mariah and hopefully in the reunion, Mariah gets on you and the others get on you for that because the way you're treating Mariah, it's, it's not right. All you needed to do was just give her an apology and kept it pushing. You could have did that after you talked to her, after she sent you the text. You could have just apologized to her on TV and kept it pushing and then it wouldn't have festered on. And the reason why you're having a, your argument is about laundry, it's not about laundry. It's about the fact that you are not respecting her enough for an apology for a fight that you caused and did not step in to try to prevent it. You did this little thing in the background and you like fizzled away and went to the wall. You did your, you did the Homer Simpson. And then after they had a whole entire explosive thing of kicking her out of the house, you wait till after everyone made a decision to kick her out of the house to say that you, you're the reason why that happened. You owe her an apology. Because she did not deserve all that smoke. And also too, I'm still, and hopefully during the reunion we get explanation for this. Because this kind of brings me back to the summer thing again. How was Mariah kicked out of the house for just mushing um, Bria? But yet Summer has gotten to altercations not once, but twice that got physical. And she's still allowed to be in this house. Is every season like Summer's going to put her hands on somebody? I'm just saying. And again... Summer, I'm not trying to get on you because I think a lot, you got a lot of demons and stuff you need to work through, which you need to go to therapy, which also to me also means you shouldn't be on this show. I think you should be like in a therapist's office. That's it. And there's no shade to you. It's more or less, I just think this show is probably not healthy for you when you're not doing good. And it seems like you ain't, you haven't been doing good, like really probably the whole time. Um, both, both seasons. And I know you need to make your money, make your coins, do what you do. I get that. But mental health trumps all that stuff. And you need to be looking out for that a lot more than anything else. Um, and maybe just like visit. Maybe you could do be, have the Mariah like treatment next season where you're just kind of there for a weekend or something like that. But like, Again, you already know Justice for Mariah over here, but with Amir and the way he treated that apology, and it was a forced apology, and it wasn't really a real apology, 
Mariah took the high roll and just took it because she figured that's all she's going to get from this man. And he acted like a pestilent child about it. Even though it's clear as day why you should apologize. And really, if you wouldn't apologize right after it happened, when it, when it happened, and confess to her right then and there, except for a cower and not say anything, wait till she was out of the house to say all that, this would be a non-issue. But I think you kind of did that on purpose, as Mariah even called out, because you don't have a storyline. <laughs> you have nothing going on. Let's be real. No one cares about your relationship with you and your toxic girlfriend because this is given toxic because she seems very clingy and kind of it's a little much um, and controlling. Um, and also we I didn't forget about the, the, the tweets that you had prior to the show. It was given very much anti-black. So, yeah, I. I will be okay if you're not on this show next season because you and the way you treat Mariah, I didn't like that. I didn't like it at all. So there's that. Okay, so Shanice was in this episode, but she was really just kind of having fun and having a good time most of this time. Like there really wasn't, Shanice wasn't really focused too much in this episode other than really hanging out with. So Shanice and Bria, y'all already know that they clicked up and then same thing with even like Noelle. So the subject of the clicking up kind of came up again because the aftermath of what happened between Summer, Bria, and like um, Noelle all came up. And so I believe it was Bria and Shanice that told Jordan and Preston everything that Summer said um, about what caused the fight and everything. Because again, Jordan only overheard it we saw what she did last time, so she hit, she she stayed away from it. Um, and now Preston and Jordan are in their feelings about Summer because they find out from I think it was Bria that was like, yeah, she's like my friendship because because the fight started at least to them based off of the fact that Bria, Shanice, and Noel. Just have, they have fun together. They're, a lot of their friendship's pretty light. It's not too heavy. And really, it's like summer, perspective wise. Why are you supposed, why are you trying to have a heavy friendship while you're on vacation? I think that's kind of what, they're, they're on the time over here for a good time, not a long time. And then we'll, we'll do the heavy stuff when we're not on vacation. Like, Put it aside, compartmentalize it. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that's what a lot of them are doing. At least Shanice, Shanice, I feel like that's exactly what she's doing because, again, that's my Aries sister, and that's what we do. One thing that we can do very well, especially once we're evolved, is compartmentalize our emotions. Turn it off, turn up, and then, you know, after the turn up's over, go back to our respective corners and be emotional. <laughs> That's how I do things. Uh, anyway, or I try to. Uh, lately, I've been a little bit more vulnerable. But younger me, yeah, I, I was a I was a habitual compartmentalizer when it came to my emotions. Um, a little too a fault, um, which I think Shanice is still in that too a fault mode. But anyway, not much with Shanice happened other than they did talk to Jordan and Preston. But speaking of Jordan and Preston, they're in their feelings because of the fact that Summer. Um, was doing the comparison of friendships and she basically said to Bria and then that the friendship with Preston and her, Preston and Jordan and her, her is not that great. And, you know, Preston and Jordan do have a conversation with Summer about it. And for once Summer, and for once Jordan was not like being her mean girl self, she was actually being genuine because you could tell both Preston and um, Jordan were both like visibly hurt by what Summer said. Because again, Summer and her communication skills, they suck. I I'm sorry, she does not communicate well at all. And I don't know how she doesn't know that. Um, Cause it has, I don't think it's, cause it doesn't have anything to do with the negative stuff that's going on in her life. She just is not a good communicator, just in general. And I think she needs to really work on that. 
But um, anyway, so they're visibly hurt and like kind of saying, you know, if you need to open up to us, you could do that. And that's kind of the whole entire running theme of everyone's trying to like get Summer to open up and she still isn't doing it. And part of me thinks that's what she wants is for everyone to kind of be all about her. And I don't think she's doing it on purpose. I think that's just like a a thing that is happening because she wants to feel seen and heard, but it's just in a very toxic, draining kind of way. And even Noella do Noella and her do end up having the conversation, one on one conversation that morning. You know, after everything went down, and. Summer claims he doesn't, she doesn't remember putting hands on Brie, on um, Noelle. That's what she's claiming. And she's saying when she's drunk, she sees red. And she's kind of blaming it on the alcohol, but it's like, girl, you can't blame on the alcohol. Because also, too, it's just, Summer's very much acting like a child, an adult child. Like, and it, it's not, it's not appealing at all. Like, they were actually talking about earlier on that morning where um, <laughs> Alex was like, let me get the tea. What happened? So it was Alex. And, and that's when Preston first found out about it. And then they kind of explained what happened. And um, yeah, Alex, both Alex and the thing Preston both said, you cannot use being drunk as an excuse every single time you do stuff. And Preston, I think, was saying it generally because that also, child, that applies to Bria, too. Like, you can't keep being like, I'm dr drunk. You can't be raging and regretting every single day. That's, that's just, that's, that's not it. Maybe you should stop drinking alcohol for a little bit. Take a break. So, anyway, that was pretty much all of Alex this whole entire episode, by the way, was that. And then her, inter his interactions with Noelle. That's pretty much it. Brief interaction is not really much, but back to Summer and Noelle. So Summer and Noelle, they have the conversation and then Summer's like, do you like, and then Noelle's like, do you remember like putting hands on me? Cause you put hands on me. And she's like, no, I don't remember. And she's like, I'm sorry. Like just whenever I like, you know, get really, really angry like that, I see red. And then Summer, she's apologetic, but it's so dry of apology. And then she also does try to say, I promise you I won't do that again. It's like, well, if you don't remember doing that, how, are you, how can you promise somebody you'll never do that again? And Noelle, being smart and using her intuition, she's like, you know, I, I'm going to forgive her, but I'm not going to forget any of this. And we're not going to be as cool as we were. And I don't think they're in a good place at all right now, probably. I think Summer probably, unfortunately, iced herself out. I don't think, I think most of the people in the group probably don't mess with her like that right now because her apologies when she apologizes is very not accountable. It's like more or less like she, she apologizes to move on, to move forward. So it's not a real apology. Um, cause I don't think she really knows how to apologize well because I don't think, I don't know. I feel like there was a lot of self, self awareness lacking with her. So, you know. How are you going to apologize for something you don't remember doing and thinking you're not going to do that again? And this is not the first time you put hands on someone. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, this is a pattern of yours. You get so angry that you cannot control yourself. That's not, you know, but because even with the Noel thing, Noel got pushed before she was even trying to do anything. Like, she wasn't, that was before, like, towards the end of the episode when Noel was following her around afterwards. Because for me, after that would have happened, I would have been following her around, but not for that reason. I would have got kicked out of the house. <laughs> but that's just me. Like, you don't get to put hands on me like that. Like, and, and, it's, and it's all good. I don't care how drunk you are. Like, we've all been drinking. So it was one of those things, like, you don't get to do that. And that's just me. But... It wouldn't have went the same. Like, I'll have that kind of patience. And <laughs> Noelle's still patience of the same. And just the way Noelle articulated herself after this, I I love her. <laughs> she's 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 amazing for this. And 
Also, too, even later on in the episode, because Greek life was talked about a lot in this episode, because we already know Nick is in the fraternity, and a lot of the guys are in the fraternity, like um, Alex is in the fraternity, and also Press is in the fraternity, and then they're joking with... Um, with um, Jasmine that her baby's gonna be a fraternity too. He's gonna be a fraternity too. Like, because we already know Silas is also in fraternity. Um, like, actually Silas and Preston are fraternity brothers. So, um, but they're really just celebrating the Divine Nine because not all of them are in the same fraternity. And then we know Noelle, she's an AKA. And then we had some other, we had some others there. Um, I, okay, I'll be honest, I've always wanted to be in a um, sorority, um, but the only sorority I've ever saw myself ever being in was AKA, so I don't really know the other ones like that, and also to any of my friends or like my close friends that are in a sororities are all AKAs, like, <laughs> I really only know AKA sorority girls, like, those are like my people. They're 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 the ones to me that seem like they're truly girls. Girls like they're the homies. Like, sorry. I mean, I do have a bias, even though I'm not part of the Greek life. But that is one of my main regrets. Is I would have wished to have done that, been part of that. I think that just would have been everything. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Next. So then the other thing that happened this episode besides the AKAs and all that good stuff is that Bria, um, so Bria, um, is also welling from the aftermath of everything that happened between her and Summer. And Bria's not ready to talk to Summer because the other thing that I forgot, I think I did not mention this in a review last week is that Summer kind of started things off with Bria out of nowhere. So that I did say. But then the other thing was Summer set rubbed some information in Bria's face about, you know, Simon not really messing with her like that. Because the other thing that we've noticed this whole season, Bria and Simon are not in a good place right now. And towards the end of the episode, it totally imploded. But... Bria was talking earlier on that day. We find out Bria was talking earlier on that day to Jordan. Summer wasn't even in the room. Summer was in the restroom, but they were like in Jordan and Summer's room. And she threw that information in her face later on when the opportunity rose, which makes me look at Summer a little funny because I was on her side when her and Jordan got in the argument earlier on a couple episodes ago about her throwing information out to the group and, you know, throwing Jordan's information out into the group, not as directly, but still throwing some things out there. But I literally saw this is what she did. And she, and she technically did it before even with like Bria, not Bria, but um, Noelle. Like, Summer has a pattern of doing this. Like, and so Bria's like, I can't mess with her. I don't want to talk to her right now. And so Summer, separately before all this, before Bria's talking to like um, Preston and um, Jordan because they're trying to mediate things, um, Summer has a conversation while also having the same the conversation about their friendship. Um, Summer also has a conversation about what happened with her and Bria, and. The other thing that's bothering me about this whole thing, but we'll go, we'll, I'll talk about that afterwards, but um, Summer's like, okay, yeah, I'm so sorry. I should apologize to her. Let me apologize to her. So Summer tries to go and apologize to Bria and Bria's like, I'm not, I want to do it right now. She's like, okay, that's fine. I don't think Summer really took that well, but it, it looked like she just walked away and kept it pushing, but I don't think she took that well, actually. But also the other thing that's bothering me about this whole entire situation with Summer is none of this is about anyone in the house. And she is so closed off that she won't tell people that. And she tried to use Bria as a scapegoat of what's going on, even though that's not really what's going on. And so that makes me look at Summer really, 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 really weird. It's like, I want to have grace for you but you are not a good person. <laughs> and, 
And I don't know if you're not a good person because you're going through a lot right now or if that's just your MO. Because it's coming off that that's your MO. And I understand that ends up happening after a while when you don't get the help you need. But I'm going to need her to get the help that she needs so she stops this because this is just not cute. And it's not, it's not good. And she even said to Noelle when she was talking to Noelle, well, I get really, really mad at her other people. I was like, girl, that's not good. That's giving like, like in what world is that okay? And she said she knows it's not okay. And I'm like, so you know it's not okay. You're not getting the help you need. I think she thinks she's going to just figure this out on her own. It's like, girl, it, that ship has sailed. That ship has sailed. Once you start crossing the line, putting hands on people, but then having to like do this rage and regret thing, you're past that point where you can figure it out yourself. Go get therapy. And I hate that that's the episode that this is, but that's the episode that this is. Like, Really, summer, this, this this episode, really the season has just been draining. And this is kind of the episode where I'm just a little bit done with it. I hope next episode is going to be a little bit lighter. Because overall, this episode was not a light episode. It was kind of like a heavy episode. Oh, Phil did show up too at the party. Um, which was kind of weird and awkward. I feel like Phil does not really belong to the group at all. Um, <laughs> or belong with the group at all. It's, it's, it's giving awkward. Speaking of awkward... So towards the end of the episode, Bria and Press, and uh, Bria and Simon get all the way into it because Simon, this whole entire time, wants to wear this flamingo outfit. Not the same one he came up with that was like pajamas. It's like literally a flamingo suit. I don't know what um, I don't know if um, Simon's ish like. I don't know what his obsession with flamingos are, but it, it, clearly it's a thing. Anyway, so. Bria and him already had a conversation like, this is not a good idea. Probably don't do that. Don't do that. Because, and I'll explain a little bit why. So the reason why the Flamingo thing was not a good idea is this party that um, Nick is having, this is also him commemorating his fraternity brother that died. So this is a special occasion. That's the reason why they're dressed and they're celebrating the Divine Nine and all that stuff. It's really about his fraternity brother he lost and he opened up to everyone in the group explaining that. So it was giving a time and place and Simon doesn't, and we saw this last season too, Simon does not understand time and place. He doesn't get it. And I don't know if it's a language barrier thing. I think it might be a cultural barrier thing. Not sure. Um, but so he did go up, go downstairs with the flamingo outfit anyway. And Bria was pissed. Rightfully so. She's like, dude, that's disrespectful. She's like, this is not the time to do this. You're embarrassing me. And this is not the first time that she has said that. That has definitely been a running theme where he does not, he sometimes embarrasses her. Given she embarrasses herself a lot, but I do at least understand to see that Bria, for the most part, knows the time or place. I think sometimes she does, does dramatic antics for TV because she knows it makes, you know, as drama makes good TV. And also that is her, but I think she turns it up a notch for the show. Um, because let's be real. We know she did not really have an issue with Mariah like that for real. I think she did that for the show. <laughs> and she was like, you know what? So, there needs to be a villain on this cast. I'll be the villain. Like, I think she, like, genuinely, I think she did, did that on purpose. So that's kind of why I don't pay Bria any mind. Because I'm just like, someone needs to spice up things in this house. Like, you need a villain. You do. Um, and if she's willing to do and lean into it and be like, hey, that's me, fine. Um, and she wasn't as much of a tornado as she was last season. Last season, child, she was a whole entire mess. And this season, she it's like it's very strategic. I think she's doing all this on purpose, but not the her and Simon thing. So towards the end of the episode, though, they get in a whole entire pull-up fight in the room. They go back to the room, and she's like going off on him. She's like, you're embarrassing me. She's like, you know what? It's over. So they break up at the end. Um, but it does end as a to-be-continued, so I don't know if they're going to be stayed broken up or not. 
And then everyone else, while all this was happening, was just like, I don't know why all that just happened. And then also too, while this is happening, Natalie sees this whole entire thing happening. She goes and brings everything, brings this information back to the group. She's literally a bone carrier. <laughs> She's like, oh, I got the tea, I got the tea. I'm like, oh Lord. But anyway, that concludes this episode of Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. Um, so I think we're only gonna have two more episodes left, maybe? I know they're filming the reunion right now, so I'm happy about that. I'm wondering if it's gonna be one part or two part reunion. Hopefully it's a two part reunion. Um, I know it's shorter episodes, but I think they deserve a two part reunion because they didn't have a reunion last season. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.